Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Student Steel Bridge Competition software webinar. Today we have Sabrina Tedeschi with Bentley Education who will give you an introduction to STAD Pro. My name is Christy Sattler with AISC Education, and I'll be hosting today's webinar. Before I hand it off to Sabrina, I have a couple quick announcements. So first, if you have any questions, please send that through the Q&A or chat. We'll answer questions at the end of the presentation. And second, this webinar is being recorded. We'll post the recording on the webinar section of our website at AISC.org backslash SSBC webinars. I'd like to thank our 2025 SSBC program sponsors and to highlight our steel level sponsor, W&W AFCO Steel. I would also like to thank today's featured software sponsor, Bentley Education. Free access to structural analysis and modeling software is so important for our participants. We appreciate this opportunity as well as the introductory webinar that you're offering. And now I would like to hand it over to Sabrina Tedeschi, structural subject matter expert with Bentley Systems. Welcome, Sabrina. Okay, thank you, Christy, and welcome everybody to our presentation today. Um, hopefully you're all seeing my screen. It's just a basic PowerPoint presentation for now. Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and start by introducing myself. So my name is Sabrina Tedeschi and I'm a structural engineer here with Bentley Systems. Today, what we're going to be doing is we're gonna be discussing STAD Pro. Now STAD Pro is a comprehensive and integrated finite element analysis and design application that includes visualization capabilities, a simple user interface, and a wide range of design codes. With STAD Pro, you can analyze any structure exposed to static, dynamic, wind, seismic, thermal, and moving loads. STAD Pro provides structural analysis and design for any type of project, including buildings, culverts, plants, bridges, stadiums, and marine structures. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna show you how to create a simple truss model in the STAD Pro Physical Modeler in preparation for using STAD as a design tool for your AISC, student steel bridge competition. So let's go ahead and get started. And what I'm going to do is direct your attention over to my STAD Pro screen. Now the current version available for STAD Pro is STAD Pro 2024. And as Christy mentioned earlier, all Bentley software is available to any student or university student around. So if you are interested, I would definitely encourage you to go to Bentley Education. You're just going to create a login with your .edu email address, and then you'll see that all of the software, including STAD Pro 2024, is available for free download. We also do have some education programs, and of course, our YouTube channel is available. I'll give the address for some of those extra resources towards the end of today's presentation. So what we're going to do today is we're going to create a simple truss model, and we're gonna use a physical modeling workflow to accomplish that. So after you launch STAD Pro, we're going to ask the program to create a new model for us. Over in the left-hand pane, I'm gonna click on the new option. I'm going to name my structure, and I'm going to place it where is convenient for me. Next below that, we're gonna see the type of structures. Let's go ahead and describe what this means for us. So in STAD Pro, we have two different types of workflows available, and they're basically modeling workflows. We have an analytical modeling workflow, which is used to create a structure using analytical elements. An analytical model is a finite element model of the structure, which will be processed directly by the analysis and design engine. In addition to that, we also have a physical modeling workflow. This is used to model your structure using physical elements. The physical modeler is used to draw your elements as they will be physically constructed. The program will then automatically decompose your physical model into an analytical model, which is basically, again, the finite element model for the purpose of analysis and design. So here, hopefully on your screen, you can kind of get a chance to understand the difference between an analytical model, which is basically your finite element model, versus your physical model, which is basically how your structure is going to be physically constructed. Now, I do find that, especially for something that you're working on, the physical modeler might be an easier modeling tool. So we're going to go ahead and focus on that today. 
So let's go ahead and select a physical modeler. And then we're going to select our units. We're going to be using the English unit system. And then we'll click, click on the Create button. OK. Let's take a look at our taskbar. We have two different StatPro icons. The first is basically your StatPro analytical modeler. And when you're using a physical modeling workflow, you're going to have this extra icon for the StatPro physical modeler. Now, before we dive into creating any model geometry, let's kind of understand how the interface works. Now, within StatPro, you can create a variety of different types of objects, either graphically or through a series of spreadsheets. If you want to use the access or have access to any of the graphical modeling tools, those are available in the model tab at the ribbon toolbar. And I would suspect that for this bridge competition, this is the main tool you're going to be using, the add member tool. It's basically used to create a member from one node to another. In addition to that, you also may find it's easy to add some objects directly through the spreadsheets or also use the spreadsheets to edit your information after it's created. We have a spreadsheet available in the physical modeler for any type of object or any type of information that can be assigned to that particular object. And to access those spreadsheets, you're going to go to the Spreadsheet tab in the ribbon toolbar, and you can see all the different spreadsheets we have available. I'm going to start with this spreadsheet here. This is my nodes spreadsheet. And when that spreadsheet is active, we're going to see the nodes table over in the data area. And creating nodes is typically my first step for creating any type of model within STAD Pro. Now that we've discussed that, let's go ahead and talk about what we're trying to accomplish today. And I typically have a very straightforward workflow that I use whenever modeling any type of structure within STAD Pro. I typically start by creating my model geometry. For a simple truss structure, that would be all of my nodes and all of my members. Then I'm going to assign section properties, material properties, and specifications. Of course, this information will be used during the analysis. Then I'm going to model my loads, then specify my analysis commands. So it's a very simple workflow. Whether I'm using the physical modeler or the analytical modeler, I'm going to typically follow this type of way or method to assign my information to my model. So my first step for this one is I'm going to go ahead and create some nodes. And I'm going to do that directly within the node spreadsheet, which is typically where I begin. As you can see, each node is defined by its X, Y, and Z global coordinate locations. Okay. While we are defining our nodal locations, it's important to understand what the global axis orientation is in STAD Pro. And we're going to see that directly on my screen. Okay. Right now, I'm taking a look at the elevation of my structure. And I know that because if I say switch to front view, that's what I see. This is going to reveal to me what the vertical axis is in STAD Pro. And your vertical axis in STAD Pro is always your Y axis. And here I can see because of the red arrow that as Y increases or basically a positive Y would be going up, negative Y would be going down. It's important to know where you are in space at all times because certain programs, certain features within the programs can be specified according to the global axis system. Those will include things like nodal coordinates. It might also include things like direction of loads. And we want to make sure that we specify all of our information as accurately as possible. That being said, I'm going to go ahead and enter in my nodal coordinates. And I have four nodes I'm going to start by creating and just to save a little bit of time, I went ahead and put those in a spreadsheet on the side. As you can see, all of these tools or spreadsheets do act like spreadsheets. So if you had information in something else like Excel, you can just copy and paste it here, which is basically what I have for my first four node locations. So here we can see a purple dot will appear on your screen and the node numbers are automatically assigned to the, each of those nodes. Once you create your nodes, you're ready to start creating some members, OK? I create my nodes first because that gives me additional snapping points in that graphical add member tool requires some nodes to already be in your model for that to be utilized. So now that I have some nodes, and this is going to represent the outside perimeter of my truss, I'm going to go to the Model tab of the Ribbon Toolbar. And again, within this Create block of data, I have all the different objects that I can create within STAD Pro. And 
or a trust structure, I'm going to use the member, the create member tool. If I click on that tool, I'm going to notice my cursor changes a little bit. This is letting me know that now I am in an active modeling mode. What this tool wants you to do is it wants you to click on the starting node of a member and the ending node of a member. So every member is defined by its starting node and ending node. And to utilize this tool, I could just click on my starting node. Let's go with this node right here. You can see here, I basically have a rubber banding effect because I've started the command at this node and it wants to know where my second node is. I'm gonna say my second node is over here and this is eventually going to represent my bottom cord. Now, what we're also gonna notice is that I'm still in the active modeling mode. It's going to assume that the last node I clicked on is the starting node for the next member. Maybe that's the case, maybe that's not. Let's say I wanna pick up my pencil and not draw the next member using the last node I clicked. I'm gonna push my escape key, okay? The escape key on my keyboard will go ahead and exit me out of that command. To exit out of the command, I can also just deselect that tool, that'll do the same thing. And then that's true for any of these create modeling tools. Let's go back to the add member tool again. I'm just gonna create the outline of my truss, hit escape when I'm done. Now this is the outline of my truss system and I am ready to add some more pieces of information. And what I have in my particular truss is I have some vertical web members and some diagonal web members, okay? Now I could just start modeling with this information here, but I think it's gonna be a lot easier if I have nodes at the exact locations I need, because again, that create member tool works great when I already have existing nodes. So let's start with our segmenting our top member. And as we do that, we should discuss how to make a selection within STAD Pro. So let me just click anywhere in my screen. You're gonna see everything becomes grayed out. In STAD Pro, whenever we want to assign or manipulate or edit data, what's going to be required is for us to make a selection first, okay? I can select a node, I can select a member, or I can select several of these types of items. First thing we're gonna notice is that depending upon what you have selected in your window, you're going to see some additional tabs available at the top of your screen. And then this, right now I have a member selected, I have the member tab, and this member tab could be used to add information to the model to that particularly selected member. If I had a node selected, the same thing would happen. I would have a node tool, and then I'd have some extra tools available for nodes. If I wanted to select multiple objects, I can go ahead and draw a fence around them. If I wanted to clear my selection, I can click anywhere in the main window. And if I want to select, say, the top cord and bottom cord without selecting anything else, I'm gonna hold down my control key, which will allow me to select individually those objects and basically add it to the selection. Let's start with the top cord. I'm gonna select the top cord and basically what I wanna do is I wanna create nodes along this top cord that are evenly spaced so that I can use those nodes to create my web members. So I've selected this top cord. I'm gonna to go to the member tab and the ribbon toolbar. And again, I can see all types of different tools that are available. I'm gonna take a look at this tool right here. This is gonna be segment member tool. And with this tool, I can split members into a number of segments. And the advantage of this tool is I don't need to know how long this top cord is. It will go ahead and place the nodes evenly spaced along the length of the top cord. So I'm gonna go ahead and say split members in a number of segments. Let me go ahead and enter the number of segments I want, which for this top cord will be six segments. Now, do I want to officially split this top cord or do I wanna just create nodes? I'm gonna just create nodes. When I'm building a physical model, it's not necessary to segment that top cord at the location where it's intersecting the web uh, members of my truss. The program will do that internally automatically when I build my analytical model. But in the field, I expect that top cord to be a continuous member. So I don't need to segment it in the physical modeler. The program's gonna break it up automatically into its finite element analysis model. So I'm gonna create my nodes only and then click okay. And you can see here, I have some nodes created. 
they're automatically placed evenly spaced. I'm going to repeat that process for the bottom cord. So I'm going to select the bottom cord, go to segment member, split member into a number of segments. And this time I'm going to go with eight segments and I'm still going to create the nodes only. Let's go ahead and click OK. Now that I have those additional nodes, this gives me all the nodes that I'm going to need eventually for my entire model, which means that create member tool will be a great uh, use for now on. So let's go to the modeling tab of the ribbon toolbar. I'm going to grab that create member tool and I can go ahead and I can create my diagonal members. Again, if I want to pick up my pencil, I just click on the escape button. So now I've created my diagonal members and there are still some vertical members I want to create. I could use the create member tool, but I also have some other tools that might be helpful. So let me go ahead and select all the nodes in my top cord. Once I have the nodes in the, my top cord, I again have this node tab available to me. And one of the tools I really like when building trusses is this member generation tool. This will basically add a member between two existing nodes in a particular global axis direction. So I've selected the nodes of my top cord. I want to generate some vertical members going down. So that would be in the negative Y direction. Let's go ahead and say negative Y. Now at this point, we have finished creating our simple two-dimensional truss. And of course, you can use any of these tools for whichever geometry you have for your truss for the student steel bridge competition. Now, once we create our model geometry, we're ready to move on to step two. And if you recall, step two is to assign information to our model. These would be things like section properties, material properties, and specifications. So let's go ahead and start there. Now, hopefully at this point, we've gotten familiar with the idea of making a selection because now we're going to be assigning pieces of information to particular members of this truss. So we need to go ahead and select those members first. I'm going to select the top and bottom cord. And remember that the control key allows me to select more than one object at one time. Let's go to the member tab in the ribbon toolbar. And I'm going to assign a section property. To do that, I'm going to click on this section icon. And I can see that STAD Pro comes with a variety of means for assigning section properties. Let's take a look at some of those. The first option is to go with a standard section. When I select a standard section and I basically select the USA, basically all of the AISC steel profiles are going to be available for me. That's in the current version of the AISC manual. Okay. The program internally knows all the section properties, things like cross-sectional area, moment of inertia for all of these properties since they are predefined. In addition to that, we can also go with prismatic section properties. So maybe you don't have a standard AISC section, but you have a pretty standard shape. So we can go ahead and select any of these option for prismatic section. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to give the program the dimensions of our section and ask the program to calculate the properties. And we can go ahead and calculate things like cross-sectional area, shear area, torsional constant, and moment of inertia for any of these standard shapes. Now let's say neither of those options work for you. You have something that's not very typical. Well, in that situation, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I'm going to go with a generic section. And when I select a generic section, that means I, as the engineer, am going to calculate the cross-sectional area, the shear area, torsional constant, moment of inertia myself, and enter that into here. And of course, all of this information, all of these properties are needed for the finite element analysis, which will eventually be taking place. I'm going to start with this exercise with a standard section. So I want a standard section from the current version of the AISC manual, and I can select the appropriate table or shape that I want. I'm going to select a channel, and here are all the channel sections that are available. I'm going to go with a C3x3. Now I can go with a single channel, 
or I also have some additional options. And again, we're going to automatically calculate the section properties when you select a standard shape from the AISC tables. In addition to that, we're also going to assign the material properties. When we assign material properties, the program's going to use this for a variety of pieces of information. It's going to use it in your finite element analysis. So things like moment of inertia, Poisson's ratio will come into play when building the stiffness matrix and determining the distribution of forces. In addition to that, we also use the density of material to calculate the self weight of your structure. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and go with the generic steel material. And then all of that information is predefined. Things like modulus elasticity, Poisson's ratio and density of material are predefined in STAD Pro when we select steel. Let's go ahead and click okay. And you can see here, these have now been defined as steel members, channel three by three. If I wanted to see that in the spreadsheet and go to the spreadsheet tab, I'm now talking about members. So I'm gonna to go to properties. Okay, so I could see here that section properties have been assigned. And basically, through this table, you're going to actually see every single member in your model. Okay, that's the only one that's been assigned to section properties so far. Let's go ahead and tackle the vertical webs. Hold down my control key. I'm going to grab those. Now, for these, I want to call these maybe a steel rod. So I'm going to go with the prismatic section. That's not available in the AISC uh, specification. So I'm going to go with a prismatic section. Let's go with the member properties. I'm going to say assign section. I'm going to go with a prismatic section. Select the appropriate shape. I'm going to go with a circle. And I'm going to enter in the diameter. Now you're going to see for a circle, we can automatically calculate these properties for you. Now, every single input within STAD Pro is going to have its associated units right adjacent to it. So here I can see that my units are in feet. And let's say, for example, that feet's not super convenient for me because I have a very small steel rod. The way any of these inputs work is if you use a standard unit abbreviation, you can go ahead and enter that in. So let's say my rod is one inch diameter. I can just write one inch, click somewhere else, it's going to automatically convert it to feet for me. I can name this section in case I want to assign it to anything else. One inch diameter rod, still steel. You can see all the cross-sectional properties have been created and we'll click OK. Now lastly, let's go ahead and go with our diagonal members. Again, I'm going to assign a section property. I'm going to go with a prismatic section. This time I'm going to go with a tube and I'm going to say this is one inch by one inch by 0 0.25 inches. If I see this calculate button, I want to click that. I'm going to go ahead and say calculate. And with this information, basically the program wants to know I'm done entering information and it'll calculate all these properties for me. Again, I can name it anything I want. I'm gonna go ahead and say one inch tube, click okay. And now I can see it's assigned. Now this leads us to a very important piece of information for a finite element analysis. And let's take a look at the spreadsheet over here. Here we've assigned our member properties. We can see the section property and the material property assigned to each member within our model. When you're doing a finite element analysis, it's important that the program knows what section and what material are assigned to each individual member. Without this information, we cannot perform a full finite element analysis. So this is an area I like to go to to make sure I didn't miss a member in my model. Now for something like a 2D truss, that might be pretty simple to interrogate, but when you have a much larger real world structure, then you might not realize that there's a member that doesn't have a section property. So this is one of the areas I like to go to kind of see. If any of these fields are blank, then I know that there's something that I need to address. I should also note that whenever you select a member within these tables, it's going to become highlighted on your screen and you can go ahead and make edits directly within this area. Now let's go ahead and move on and assign some specifications. So what specifications are is they're basically pieces of information that's going to affect the behavior 
of your model. And you're going to want to make sure that you are creating your structural model the same way you're going to be detailing your structural model in the same way you expect it to be behaving. Okay, so let's go ahead and select some members. I'm going to select my vertical and diagonal web members. Let's go to the member table. Now, specifications that can affect the behavior of a model. These could be things like the member rotation. That's the rotation along its longitudinal axis. You know, if I had a wide flange section, is that web vertical or is it horizontal or something in between? Um, the member end fixity will affect the behavior of the model. Do I plan on detailing a pinned end connection or a moment end connection or both? Okay. And also, what do I expect the axial behavior of this member to be? Now, let's take a look at the axial behavior. Now, you can in STAD Pro define something as a tension only member or a compression only member, which basically means that those members take axial load only and only either tension or compression, okay? I'm gonna call mine a truss member. So basically what I'm saying is that the web members of my truss are acting as a truss, which means that those members can take axial load only. So no shear, no moment. It can be tension, it could be compression, but it can be anything other than axial load. So I'm gonna go ahead and say those are acting as truss members. The last thing I'm going to do with my model before I'm done with the assigning properties is I'm going to go ahead and assign the supports. And supports get assigned to nodes within your model. I'm going to go ahead and select my base supports, go to the node area, and you can see I have a variety of different types of supports depending upon the fixity at that particular node. Okay, And you can see that you can assign something as an idealized fixed connection or fixed support pin support, or custom. Custom means I'm going to go ahead and control which degree of freedom is released versus which is restrained. Let's go ahead and call this a fixed support. Now that I'm done assigning properties and specifications, I'm ready to move on to assigning some loads. And let's take a look at our loads spreadsheet. Now, every model within STAD Pro must have at least one load case. And you can see that we already create that load case for you. Now for the steel bridge competition, I'm going to go ahead and just use one load case for my example, but you can go ahead and add additional load cases as needed. Okay. Every load case is defined by its name and its category. The category is used exclusively for when you want to use STAD Pro's facility for generating load combinations. I'm not planning on using that facility, so I'm going to go ahead and leave my category set to none. Now, the first load that I typically assign to my model is always the self-weight. Again, we're going to use your cross-sectional properties and your material density to define the self-weight. And to define the self-weight, I'm going to tell the program that the self-weight belongs in this load case. And I'm going to activate the self-weight vector. Okay, You can see that the self-weight multiplier has been added. It's added in the negative y direction, which means self-weight is a downward acting force. In addition to that, I can go ahead and assign loads to both members and nodes within my model. To do that, and let's go ahead and just add one point load for today. I'm gonna go ahead and grab one of the nodes in my model, go to the node tab and add a nodal load. You can see here, we can add forces or moments, and I'm gonna see a direction. These are my global axis directions. So let's say I am adding a load of minus 0.1 kips. That's kilopounds. So this would basically be 100 pounds downward acting force. Okay. Let's go ahead and click OK. And you can see I can add that force there. We can add vertical forces, lateral forces, and we can also add forces to members. So here when I select the member, you can see I have a variety of different types of loads that are available. Now, our last step in our workflow is to go ahead and specify your analysis command. So if I went to the loading tab in the ribbon toolbar, took a look at my analysis commands, I can see that we have several different analysis types available within STAD Pro. And let's just very briefly describe what these are. So your two main analysis types that I expect that you might want to utilize for the seal bridge competition is a linear elastic analysis or a P-delta analysis. A linear elastic analysis is a first order analysis. And what this basically means is that any type of second order effects such as P-delta effects are not considered. 
So it's basically some of your forces will be the results in your model, okay? P delta analysis is a little bit different, okay? Structures that are subjected to both lateral loads and vertical loads at the same time can often experience second order effects due to the movement of the points of application of vertical loads. So if you take a thought of maybe like a leaning column, if I add a vertical force on the top of that column, if that column's out of plumb, I should see some additional moments at the base of that. And basically that's what a P-delta analysis does, okay? Is it takes into consideration when vertical loads and lateral loads are both applied to your structure at the same time that the structure could displace and some of your force might, forces may increase as a result of that. So those are your two different types of analysis. I'm going to go ahead and keep it with the linear elastic analysis. Click OK. Now let me go ahead and do a time check because I think I'm running a little long. Um, Christy, are we OK? I probably have just a few more minutes. Yes, yes, you can okay. go ahead and finish up. OK, I wanted to be sure of that. Sorry about that. Um, OK, let's finish up. And the last step is we need to build our analytical model and review our results, okay? Now, as I mentioned earlier, what we're going to do with the STAD Pro Physical Modeler is we're basically going to decompose this physical model into its analytical model, which again is basically just the finite element model. And then that's what your analysis is gonna be performed on. So when you're ready to return to the analytical modeling mode, we're just gonna to go to the modeling tab, the ribbon toolbar, click on the analytical modeling icon, we're going to do a save if we haven't done so already. And we're going to read the model. And basically what this is going to do is it's going to build your finite element model for you automatically. In this dialogue, we're going to see if that process was successful. Okay. If your model's missing any key pieces of information, like say you have a member that wasn't assigned a section property, and we all know that that's now very important for finite element analysis, that's going to be flagged here. And it's going to say, do you still want to close the physical model, or do you want to go back and make a few changes? My analytical model creation was successful, so I'm going to go ahead and click OK. It's going to automatically return me to STAD Pro. All of the information I specified in the physical modeler is available in STAD Pro. We can see here this is now the finite element of my model. Now, an important aspect for working with a physical model within STAD Pro is when you need to make any changes you're gonna to return to the physical modeler. So if I needed to say change this section property from a one inch diameter steel rod to a one and a half inch diameter steel rod, I'm not gonna make that change here. I'm gonna to return to the physical modeler, make the change, rebuild it. Now at this point, we're ready to go ahead and perform our analysis. You can see our analysis command, everything has already been set up for us. So we can just hit run analysis. We have finished. I'm going to go to the post-processing mode. This is where I'm going to go to gain information on the results of my model in both graphical and tabular formats. Let's go ahead and click Done. Click OK. And you can see through a series of spreadsheets, I have a variety of pieces of information available to me. If I select the displacements area, I can see the displacement for each node within my model. This is interactive, so as I select each one, I can see exactly where I'm looking at, if I go to my summary tab, I can see which node is deflecting the most in the entire model. I can see what my reactions are. Then I can also see my beam results. So let's say um, I want to take a look at the moment, okay? Let's say I want to take a look at the shear. I'm going to click FY, okay? I have very little load on my model, so we're not seeing much there. Let's say I want to take a look at the axial load. I can go ahead and take a look at that as well, okay? If I wanted more information, I can go ahead and say view, label settings. And if I went to loads and results, I can see that we color code our axial forces. So if I'm like, well, which web members are in compression and which members web members are in tension, I can see that blue members were in uh, tension, red members were in compression. Again, my diagrams are small because I did not add a lot of loading. Now at this point, this concludes our process for creating a bridge model within STAD Pro in preparation for the student steel bridge competition. Here at Bentley Systems, we wanna wish you all 
good luck with this year's competition. And we hope you found this resource uh, helpful and that STAD Pro could be utilized as a tool for you moving forward. All right, thank you very much, Sabrina. We do have a few questions, so we'll try to fit those in here and get those answered for our audience. Um, the first question is, uh, when you were splitting the top and bottom cords to generate the nodes, can you split a member into unequal segment lengths? Yes, you can. So by default, we're going to go ahead and segment a member into equal segments. But what if I didn't want to do that? What if I wanted to have my own spacing? I can go to the member tab of the ribbon toolbar. I can segment members. And you can see I have a few different options here. And in that scenario, I might want to segment a member given um, a node in distance. Okay. So if I wanted to do that, oops, I have to select a node first, select a member, segment member at a given node in distance. So basically it's like, where is that new node along the length here? What's the distance basically from this node? Okay. So if I said the distance is going to be four feet, okay, create node only click OK, four feet from here to here. Okay, great. Uh, next question is, is there any way to add custom materials or any other materials that are not already built in? Absolutely, there is. So if I went to, and that's a great question, if I went to the catalog tab of the ribbon toolbar in the physical modeler, you can see that I'm automatically given the generic steel material property, and all of these are kind of hard-coded in the program. But let's say this doesn't work for me, and I want something custom. I can go here and say, add my own material, okay? I can define it as a standard steel material, or I could say it's also a custom material, and you can see all those variables are now available for me, and I can create it anything I want. Let's say I want to call it a custom material. It's still defined according to a certain type of material because that means the variables might change. You know, if I'm defining steel, it's going to look for yield strength of steel. If I'm designing concrete, it's going to look for concrete compressive strength and so forth. But you can see I can create them myself. I can double click on that. All those variables are editable. Uh, I should also note that whenever you're in any one of these dialogues, if you click on the show help, our help is actually embedded into each dialogue. So if I wanted to see more information on any variable, I could see that. Okay, great. Uh, next question is, if the bottom cord consists of different section properties along the length that are bolted together, how would you model that? Well, if your bottom cord is different sections or along the length, then the physical metal, uh, physical approach wouldn't be quite appropriate. What we're going to do is we're going to actually segment that member. Okay, so let's say for this particular member, maybe each segment here was going to be a different section property. Well, I can't just have one physical member going from start to end because one physical member means one section property. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to officially segment that member. So here you could see segment member at intersections. Okay, let's do that. Oh, do I need to click the intersections is the question. Okay, if I do that, and basically what this is going to do is it's going to actually split this member. Now, when I do that, each of these is basically an individual physical member, and each one of those segments can have its own section properties. So if you are varying your section properties along the length of the member, you're going to basically define it as its individual segments, and then those are eligible for getting a different section property. All right, thanks for showing us that. Um, last question is, how can you check the lateral deflection at any point in the structure? Okay, so you wanna see where the node displaces out of plane. Yes. Okay, let me just very quickly, if we have a quick moment, let's add a node or add a, a load out of plane just so we have one and out of plane force. Okay, let's take a look at our global axis orientation. Out of plane force for this truss is going to be in parallel to the global z-axis, okay? So I'm gonna enter a force here. Let's go with 0 0.25. So 0 0.25 kips, click okay to that node. You can see here, let's 
Let's see. So I have that note load also added. Okay. Let's rebuild my analytical model. Anytime I make changes, I'm going to make the changes in the physical model. Okay. And then basically I'm going to return to the analytical model and it's going to rebuild that finding element model with the information I provided. So I added a lateral load. Let's go ahead and perform our analysis very quickly. I'm going to go to my post-processing mode. Okay. Okay. And I have a displacement that I'm, I'm expecting right here. Okay. So this node is probably displacing the most. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this nodal displacements table. Okay. These are according to the global axis directions. Okay. So I can see in the vertical direction, I can see in the horizontal directions, how much that node is displacing in inches. Okay. Again, I don't know if my loads were the right scale for this particular structure. So I'm, I'm seeing quite a bit of, of deflection, but basically in the lateral deflection, I'm looking for a Z. So I'm looking for the displacement in the Z direction. If I'm looking for vertical displacement, I'm looking for displacement in the Y direction. Okay. If I wanted to know which node was producing the largest lateral displacement, I'm going to say, well, which one has the maximum Z? Okay. That would be this node. Okay. This is the max Z. Node number 13. It's displacing about 3.6, 3.7 inches. Um, so you always want to look at, and that's why global axis orientation is so important because then we're also going to use that to interpret our results. All right. Well, thank you, Sabrina. That wraps up the questions that came in today. So I will just let our audience know that the websites that Sabrina referenced will be added to our website um, under the webinar section of AISC.org slash SSBC, along with the recording and other StadPro resources. So I do want to say thank you, Sabrina Tedeschi, for the presentation. And thank you again to Bentley Education for sponsoring the SSBC and providing software and resources that can be used for the competition. Thank you all yeah. for attending. Absolutely. Thank you so much. much. It's our pleasure.